What is up everybody and welcome back to the channel. We've got a real treat for you today. We've got a guest shoe reviewer on the channel which is awesome. Now there's a reason for that because the New Balance RC Elite was for me a disaster. The fuel cell midsole was so soft that it really played up with my legs and my pronation. So I actually put a post out on Instagram um, when they got launched, I can't remember what it was, uh, and said that I won't be buying them. But if anybody else fancies doing a review for me, uh, get in touch, which was awesome. And if you're not following, uh, following 40 Rounds on Instagram, make sure you do. Um, but Luke got in touch and said he's got a pair, just arrived, uh, he's happy to do a review for us. Now, uh, Luke on Instagram is injured uh, to Iron Man. I'll put it up down there anyway, uh, and you can find him, so make sure you follow him on Instagram. Uh, and he's put this uh, video together for us, which was really kind of him to do it in his own time, and I really, really appreciate appreciate it. I wish I could speak English. Um, but more importantly as well, um, this is uh, not the first time we've had a guest reviewer on the channel. If there's a shoe that you've just got in and you want to review and you want to be on the channel, make sure you DM me via Instagram and we can sort that out and get you on the channel as well because I can't run in every single pair of shoes. Um, I try and test as many as I can. Obviously, we get sent loads, loan loads, and I buy loads. Uh, don't tell me she's 40. Mind you, I think she might have worked it out. Um, but there's, there's some shoes that simply don't suit me and I won't try them. Um, so if there's something out there that you've got and you want to get on the channel and do a review, make sure you get in touch. Okay, so here we go. Over to Luke to talk about the uh, brand new New Balance Fuel Cell RC Elite version 2. Hey guys, so I'm Luke, um, or Injured to Iron Man, the number two, if you uh, want to check me out on Instagram. Um, I am a amateur runner and triathlete, um, and this week um, I'm doing a guest shoe review for 40 um, for an awesome new carbon plate super shoe, uh, the New Balance Fuel Cell RC Elite version 2, quite the mouthful. Um, so I also have um, the A6 Metaspeed Sky, I have the um, Nike Vaporfly Next% 2 um, and this is the next one on the conveyor belt that has just come uh, out in the UK this particular week. Um, it's been out in the US for a few months um, but yeah just been able to get our hands on it here now in the UK. So in this review I'm going to be looking at the key features um, for this this iteration and release and um, the differences between this and version one um, and interestingly I'm going to be comparing it to the A6 Metaspeed Sky and the Vaporfly Next% 2 to see what the key differences are um, and which one I would choose um, for my racing personally. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Right, so let's start talking about the outsole first. Something that in particular in this shoe is particularly attractive and looks awesome. Um, you will see um, one of the shoes, the right, comes with this pink colouring. If I just go over my shoulder here, look at the other one, it comes with this orange colouring under the other one. Um, which is supplemented with the orange and pink uh, on, on the upper as well. So, looks awesome on first sight. Um, now, what you notice between this and the version 1 um, is this is far more simplistic. Um, the version 1 um, had lots of kind of small rubber black triangles um, and, and it provided more coverage of, of the fuel cell um, foam as well. Um, this one's slightly more simplistic, um, slightly less grippy to the touch, um, but, but certainly looks the part. Um, so a big move um, by New Balance to change this. Um, I know certainly from, from version one, it got a lot of great feedback, um, that, that Dynaride um, rubber that it was called. So, so big move for them to, to change. Um, we will cover, I guess, the main reason why, um, a lot of it about weight and the changes in the midsole as to why they did this later on. Um, but first of all, let's, let's talk about this. Um, so I guess one of the, the key things that you notice as well as the change from this triangle structure Dynaride rubber to this this new colorway um, and design which looks great um, is it's also slightly more exposed I think it came down a little bit further previously um, the rubber outsole um, and also you'll notice this here this huge big hole in the middle um, where you can see the exposed carbon plate looks pretty cool um, more of the fuel cell foam exposed um, but yeah overall a more kind of 
simplified, um, stripped back um, approach, I guess, where they've, they've, they've looked to achieve greater weight saving um, and make the shoes lighter. Um, you'll see they have uh, the two rubber strips at the back here. And my only concern with these is you'll see they're quite thin. Um, so I'm, I guess I would have a slight concern as to whether these would wear down pretty quick um, and expose the midsole. Um, but I guess time will tell on that when it comes to running. Um, so that's the, they're the key factors underneath. Um, I guess one other thing just to call out um, is previously um, the other model had a slight, slight, slight um, flare where it kind of stuck out a little bit more at the back, um, perhaps provided a little more stability. Um, again, I think the reason they've changed this is because of this higher stack height that you see that, again, we'll come on to talk about a little later in the midsole. Um, and then I guess the... The, the final thing that I'll say um, is, is, is the squidginess of it. Um, just as squidgy, soft, spongy as before, super soft and cushioned um, on the exposed parts, um, something that's been carried over from the first model. Um, but if you are used to the Vaporfly or if you're used to the A6 Metaspeed, um, this is some, certainly, certainly a lot softer than that. Um, so, yeah. They're the key observations on the outsole. Um, let's move on to talking about the midsole and the upper. Right, guys, let's look at the midsole next. Um, so one of the most notable things about the shoe comes in the midsole. Um, there's been, certainly it's uh, called out a lot in reviews and, and something in particular that, that Fordy has called out. Um, I think he's, he's not got on well with the previous model because of, of how soft and squidgy um, that, that midsole is. Um, so... So one of the things that's that's immediately apparent is, I guess, how soft, squidgy, and, and um, cushioned it is. You can just see with me pressing on it, it's really, really soft and responsive to the touch. Now, this is way softer um, than the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent and Next Percent 2, and also um, than the um, A6 Metaseed Sky. Um, so way more cushioned, way softer. Um, so how does this actually translate? Well, it's very obvious when you go on a run, it does feel um, far softer, more plush um, underfoot, um, you know, more comfortable. And, and I think that's why potentially some people have, have suggested it, it's a better shoe for slightly longer runs, be it a half marathon or a marathon, compared to the, the more aggressive, less supportive um, and lighter feel um, of the Vaporfly and, and the Asics. Um, so... Yeah, that, that's the first thing that's immediately apparent. Now, the other thing is, is look at the stack height on this bad boy. Um, it is way higher than the previous iteration, the version one. So I think the version one came with um, a st uh, 34 to 24 millimeter heel to toe drop, um, so a 10 millimeter offset. Um, this updated version comes with 39 millimeter to 31 millimeter heel to toe drop. So what does that mean? Two things. The first is um, it's a, a smaller offset, so a smaller difference between the heel and the toes. Um, eight millimeters in this compared to 10 millimeters um, in the previous iteration, the version one. Um, and also the higher stack height. So it's higher, um, but there's a, a less difference between the heel and the toe. Um, they haven't changed the the component and, and the materials um, of this fuel cell technology midsole. It's still the same, uh, the same feeling, the same same material, effectively, um, and the same softness and, and cushioning. Um, so yeah, the the main difference, like I say, is is that difference in the offset, difference in the stack, um, and there's one more key difference in it. So you see this rather aggressive diagonal line coming down so with the changes in the stack height and offset um you know they need to change effectively the positioning of the carbon plate now what they've done um is made it slightly more aggressive in terms of this angle which it diagonally dips down um through the heel to the forefoot um, now with that slightly more angled approach um, what it effectively means is it, it almost feels like it's it's more aggressively tipping you um, onto your toes from your heel um, which 
you know, for me, is great. It feels like a more snappy, smoother, faster um, transition um, from heel to toe, um, and basically feels like it's more effortless um, when you're when you're running. Um, so for me, um, a really good update. Um, I like the new stack height. I like the more aggressive car and play. And under the foot, when you're running with it, it feels easier to transition, easier to push forward onto your toes, and, and ultimately um, makes it feel way easier and faster to run at the same pace than, than the previous iteration. Um, what's my observations when running? So I think, like I said, um, you do really notice how soft it is underfoot. Um, compared to, to, to the other competitors. Um, for me, I think that's why um, it is a good, more kind of daily trainer, um, as well as having the ability to use it in races because of the carbon plate. So for me, it's slightly more versatile. Um, and I think, like I said, I would choose this shoe right now. I love the Vaporfly, I love the Asics, but I would choose this right now to do half marathon or marathon distance um, for sure, without without a shadow of a doubt, just to preserve the joints, preserve the knees, um, and, and, and have less impact. Um, so yeah, really great first impression of the midsole. Right then guys, the final bit, let's talk about this updated upper. Um, and I mean, wow, how amazing does it look? I mean, from the side look, you can immediately see the ventilation holes, you can see through the shoe, so it's clearly extremely breathable. Um, it looks fantastic, the design, um, the flash of pink, um, the beautiful purple coloring. I think they also um, are releasing it in pink and white soon. Um, the New Balance logo coming across the toes again, you can immediately see all of these ventilation holes, really, really breathable, helping keep the, foot, the feet cool. Um, the laces um, you see come slightly um, further less down than the previous iteration. Um, and if we look at the inside again, you have the matching pink splash here to match the outsole, um, New Balance written on the inside. Um, and the heel you'll see is pretty semi-rigid. There isn't a rigid kind of heel counter here, um, but, it, but it's semi-rigid and, and certainly I think does the job of keeping your, your heel locked in. So really does look fantastic. Great colouring, great design, great breathability. Looks awesome. So anyway, let's talk about what the differences are between this and the first version. Um, so I think, like I say, obviously, very apparent again you can see the breathability of the air holes when i was out on my run you know any kind of running into a headwind gust of wind you notice instantly and um, that passes into the foot keeps the feet cool feels really light and breathable so i think that's a big improvement um and really really love that um i think the other thing is as i mentioned this heel counter so it's kind of semi-rigid it's not like a plastic heel cut but you see with it coming quite high um, and with it being quite cushioned and padded, I find it really does lock the heel and keep the heel in. Um, and that's something that I struggle with personally with, with the vapor flyer. Whilst I love them, um, you know, it just has a little bit of padding. Your heel comes out, um, and you've really got to lock it down. But with these instantly, it just feels really nice, soft, cushioned on the heel, um, and really locks the heel down. Um, and then I think the, the other thing that I briefly mentioned is the laces. So you see on the previous model, they come a little bit further down, probably to here. Um, what they've done, whilst they start in the same place as the laces, they end a little sooner, which gives you slightly more room in the toe box here. Um, so a bit more comfortable, a bit more roomy for the toes. Um, compared to the previous version, if you like the fit of the previous version, you like the fit of these. Um, they're pretty roomy in the toe box. They feel quite similar, except like I say, this change, if anything, makes them feel um, even roomier. Um, so yeah, I feel it's a fantastic upper. It looks great. Um, it's breathable and performs great. Um, and in terms of comfort, it's great. Lots of room um, and, and comfortable. So yeah, highly recommend. Right guys, so we've looked at the outsole, we've looked at the midsole, and we've looked at the upper. Um, we've compared it to the previous models. We've, we've given a brief kind of comparison to the Vaporfly and the, and the Metaspeed, which I'll give you a more detailed view, side-by-side -side look and comparison um, another time. Um, but for now, just a few closing thoughts and, and 
why, when, where I would use this, would I use this compared to the, um, the, the meta speed and the vapor fly. So I think, yeah, two or three real key observations and takeaways compared to the first iteration. The first being this higher stack height. Um, the second being the difference in offset between the heel and toe. The third being the slightly steeper comm plate, which helps propel, push you onto your toes more. Um, the more breathable, kind of jazzier looking upper. Um, and yeah, overall, it's just a, a fantastic shoe. Lots of good updates since the first. Retaining some of the great features like the spongy um, midsole and technology. Um, but like I say, with some enhancements on the upper, the column plate, the stack, um, and, and those sort of bits. So great shoe, looks great. Now, my views when I take it out on a run, um, I think, like I say, if I'm doing slower pace, you know, 6, 5.30, 5 um, minutes per kilometre, um, you know, it feels softer, comfier, more plush um, than, than the Vaporfly. You wouldn't want to take the Vaporfly out like that. It's like running on concrete, effectively. Um, but this certainly gives you the ability to, to run at those paces slightly slower and, and still feel nice and cushioned on the joints. So you could use it, you know, more for tempo runs, um, for slightly faster kind of zone two, zone three stuff, um, you know, as well as being a fantastically light and effective racing shoe. Um, so that, that's my first observation. I think the other thing, um, like I say, with, with, with the change in the carbon plate, um, it really does feel way more responsive, way more like it's pushing you from, from your heel to your toes, um, which basically means that putting out the same effort, um, you know, you're, you, you're able to run easier and, and run faster. Um, so a, a real great enhancement and change there. Um, so my personal reflections, um, I, I did love it. Um, I would be interested to see how it performs in the rain with this, perhaps not quite as grippy as its predecessor. Um, and let's see how durable and, and wearable these grips are. Um, but yeah, I, I'd be interested to see how it performs in different conditions on different terrain, perhaps on gravel or something like that. Um, but ultimately, it's a racing shoe, right? It should be should stick to to, to the roads anyway, to tarmac, to track. Um, but yeah, I'd be very interested to see how how it performs. Um, so, would I use it? Um, like I say, I have both the A6 Meta Speed and the Vaporfly. I think this is how I position it, right? Um, the Vaporfly is my go-to shoe for the, the really short distances, um, whether I'm doing 5K, short um, kind of 5K-ish track sessions, um, whether I'm doing sprint distance triathlons. Um, there's not as much support there, but it is really snappy, really fast. Um, the A6 Metaspeed Sky, I'd use slightly, slightly longer distances, perhaps 10K. Um, the reason for that is it basically has the same... Um, I guess stiffness and, and rigidity um, in the midsole and in the plate, but it's the upper slightly more comfortable, slightly more cushioned. So over that slightly longer distance, you get similar performance, but with a bit more comfort. This, um, I th listen, I think this is perfectly capable um, and will be fantastic at any distance, 5K, 10K, half marathon, marathon, whatever you want, it will perform fantastically and be fast. But for me personally, I would choose to use this over half marathon or marathon distance, um, or perhaps if I'm, you know, in training, going to do some hills or something like that. Um, because whilst it has the same performance um, at slightly lower speeds, um, it's more forgiving, more cushioned, um, and, and just more more supportive. Um, so a little gentler on the on the joints, um, and a help, you know, potentially pr prevent injury. So great shoe i definitely will will include it in my armory um and i think like i say favor it towards some slightly longer distances which, which seems consistent with with feedback elsewhere so really great shoe great upgrade from the previous version completely um worthy on par um some may say better um than than, it, than its competitors in the vapor fly and the a6 um so certainly worth considering it and having uh, in your armory all right, guys, um, hope you enjoyed the review. Um, like I say, um, if you're interested, I may do a more detailed side-by-side -side look at this compared to the A6 and the Vaporfly, look at the more detailed specifics, how they look, how they compare. All right, bye. So massive shout-out to Luke for coming on the channel. And, and firstly, 
standing in front of a camera and, and doing that is harder than it looks, people. Uh, so he did an excellent job. And um, I really appreciate it. And I think you guys do. So show uh, Luke some love in the comments and make sure you follow him. On Instagram, and like I said at the start of the video, if there is a shoe that you've just got in and you want to review it, come on the channel. Just slide into my DMs um, over on Instagram. Hit me up. Let me know. We can sort it out real easy because I'd love to have more of you on the channel. But there you go. That's it from me. I'll catch you guys later.